Hi, now looking at arguably the most important bit of software on your computer, the operating system. So we're going to go through its main functions and a couple of types of operating systems. So first of all, let's define what this means. First of all, operating system is often shortened to just OS. So if you see OS, it is short for operating system. So this is the essential software which links the hardware and other software together and generally manages the computer system. So let's unpick that a little bit. Essential, we must have an OS. If you haven't got an OS, you can't run other software because as sometimes it's thought about, um, we have sort of a hardware at the bottom. The hardware actually carries out the instructions, um, but the operating system has to sort of like sit between other applications and the hardware. Sort of a barrier between the two, therefore we need to have it because the applications can't work directly with hardware, they're designed to go via an operating system. So in terms of some examples, things like Android, iOS, this is Linux, the little penguin, and Windows 11 are examples of operating systems. Now, like any software, these can be bespoke, these can be off the shelf, these can be open source, closed source. So the um, pros and cons of those different types apply to operating systems as well. So make sure you are happy with what bespoke, off the shelf, open, closed source means because often exam questions are linked to those principles. So for instance, Android and Linux are both open source, iOS and Windows are closed source. Um, you might have a bespoke one for a very simple embedded system, but most operating systems are off the shelf like these four are. Now, just to go through some of the main functions of an OS. Now, you've really got to just go into an exam with a few of these in your head and be able to briefly describe what they mean. So first of all, the main function I suppose is to manage the hardware because only the operating system is able to interact directly with it, right? In that little picture, it sits between the user, applications and hardware. Only the OS can interact directly with hardware. So that means it's the OS's job to allocate stuff to do, allocate jobs. So for example, it might allocate instructions to a graphics card you might have but crucially it will allocate time to the CPU. So it will decide what is executed by the CPU at any given time. It also has to generally manage the applications you have installed. But when you install a new application, it's going via the OS. The OS makes sure it's installed in the correct place. Um, that will include utility software as well, not just purely application software. It also will create a interface in most cases, a graphical interface. You could have an OS with just a command line, but most operating systems have got pictures and menus and um, more visually appealing things like task bars and right-click menus, things like that. Ways for the user to interact and control the software. The OS also, because it sits between the hardware and other programs, provides a layer of security because it can control hardware access. If there is a suspicious program installed, it can prevent it from accessing the CPU, for example. But also there'll be tools like passwords and access controls built in. By access controls, that means perhaps certain accounts can't access certain files or programs. You might have had messages like administrator access is required. Things like that are to do with access controls. And a final, a little bit more technical one, you might see on mark schemes, for example, is the OS manages interrupts. So an interrupt is when something more important happens in the computer, and so the CPU has to stop what it's doing and do that more important thing instead. An example might be clicking. So if you click on the computer or you type on the computer, that will interrupt the CPU because that's a more urgent action. Now, some interrupts are more important than others. For example, the power being pulled out is really, really important. You clicking is less important and so the OS will decide what to interrupt the CPU with what is most important it will do some prioritizing. Now these are I suppose just a case of learning if you can learn some examples too that would be perfect. Also you need to know a couple of types of operating systems so first of all let's talk about single user versus multi-user operating systems. So a single user OS is a type of OS which only allows one user at a time. Now, your laptop, your phone, your tablet, if you have them, 
are likely using a single user OS. So something like Microsoft Windows can allow different user accounts, but Microsoft Windows is still a single user operating system. So that at a time is the crucial thing here. You can have multiple accounts, but they can't be used at a time in things like Windows or Mac OS or Linux. Something like iOS or Android can only really have one user account, but again, it's at a time. Okay, so most operating systems are single user. But there are operating systems which allow multiple users to use it at a single time, a multi-user operating system. And usually, this is done via a network, maybe through a network terminal, so a bit of software built into the OS which lets you connect to another computer and that might allow multiple connections at once. So a common example is something like a, a very powerful server. A powerful server might benefit from a multi-user OS because you might have multiple people trying to connect to it to make use of its extra power. So a multi-user OS is a little bit more complicated because it needs to make sure each user is allocated time of a processor. You can't just let one person use it. The whole point is you can share the resources. But also from a security point of view, a multi-user OS needs to make sure that one user is not damaging somebody another user's files, for example. So it's, it's got to be quite careful at managing multiple people connecting at any given point. Another similar concept, which you've got to be careful not to mix up. So we have got a separate pair here. We've also got single processor versus multi-processor OSs. Okay, so unrelated, pretty much, to single user, multi-user, despite them sounding very similar, so be careful. Now, a single processor OS only works or only supports one CPU. So the CPU is the main device doing most of the processing in a computer. You might have multiple processors, you might have a sound card, you might have a graphics card, but single proce processor OS only supports one CPU, regardless of your graphics card or sound card. Now, it doesn't mean you can't multitask. With only one CPU, like my computer has, probably your computer has, your phone has, you can still multitask, you can still do multiple things at once. So right now, I am talking into a microphone, I've got a PowerPoint up, I'm recording my screen, I'm recording my voice. In the background, it's checking my emails, it's checking the time. A lot is going on in parallel, but, well, it seems like it's in parallel. In reality, the OS is simply switching rapidly between multiple processors. So as I'm talking, the CPU is switching between my PowerPoint, between my recording, between my emails. It's going really, really fast, switching between those processors. And the OS manages that processor. Okay, so one CPU can still do things in parallel or seem like it is, despite being only a single processor OS. But again, in more powerful computers, you can have multi-processor OSs which can support multiple CPUs. Again, you only really see these in our most powerful servers, mainframe computers, because you might have loads of CPUs in one system, but again, much more rare. Now, the benefit of a multi-processor OS is you are able to do things definitely in parallel. With a single CPU, you probably can't do things exactly in parallel. It might seem like you are, but you can't perfectly do it. But with multiple CPUs, you can do more than one thing at once. And so the term for this is throughput. Throughput is how much you're doing at any given moment. And so having more CPUs means you've got higher throughput because you can do more stuff because you can do things in parallel. So the main thing you've got to remember is most computers are single user, single processor, but some more powerful ones can be multi-user or, or and multi-processor.